When soil turns lifeless, it can feel like the heart of your garden has stopped beating. Plants struggle to grow, leaves fade to pale colors, water slides away instead of soaking in, and the earthworms that once wriggled happily under your feet seem to have vanished. For those of us who have loved our gardens for years, this can feel discouraging, almost as if an old friend has gone silent. Dead soil is often compacted, starved of organic matter, and stripped of the microbial life that quietly sustains everything we plant. But here's the hopeful truth. Reviving soil does not require expensive products or backbreaking labor. In fact, microbes, the tiny workers that bring soil to life, respond quickly when we offer them the right ingredients. Just as our bodies find new energy after a good meal, lifeless soil can regain vitality in a matter of days or weeks with surprisingly simple steps. And best of all, these methods are wonderfully senior friendly. They allow us to work with nature, not against it. And they give us back the joy of seeing plants thrive in healthy living soil. In today's episode here on Evergreen Seniors, we'll uncover the lazy but genius tricks that bring dead soil back to life. You'll discover the ingredients that wake up dormant microbes, and you'll see how to apply them in easy, low effort ways that truly work. By the end, you'll understand how a handful of simple habits can restore your soil, strengthen your plants, and return joy to your gardening. Ingredient one, sugars, the instant spark of life. Think of sugars as the morning coffee for your soil. Just as many of us need that first cup of coffee or tea to shake off sleep and get moving, soil microbes need a quick burst of fuel to come alive again. Simple sugars deliver that instant spark. One of the most powerful and affordable tools is unsulfured molasses. Just one or two tablespoons stirred into a gallon of water and poured over your garden bed can work wonders. Within a few days, you may notice a change. The soil begins to carry that earthy, comforting aroma again, a sure sign that microbial life is returning beneath the surface. But molasses isn't your only option. Brown sugar water, rice rinse water, or even a splash of diluted fruit scraps will do the job. These sugars don't feed your plants directly. Instead, they provide energy to bacteria and fungi, giving them the strength to multiply and release nutrients in forms your plants can absorb. It's like jump-starting the invisible engine beneath your garden. And here's a small but important tip, especially for seniors. You don't need to carry heavy watering cans across the yard. Even a smaller jar or pitcher of sugar solution sprinkled gently around your plants will make a noticeable difference. Microbes are sensitive little workers, and a little energy goes a long way. So when your soil feels dull and lifeless, remember this. Just as we sometimes need a warm drink to lift our spirits, your soil's microbes are waiting for their own sip of sweetness. Give them that spark, and you'll soon see life stir once more in your garden beds. Ingredient two, soft organics, a microbial feast. Now while sugars deliver that first spark of energy, microbes can't live on sugar alone. Just as we need more than sweets to stay healthy, soil life requires a steady diet of real food, materials rich in both carbon and nitrogen. This is where soft, decomposable organics make all the difference. Think about the scraps left behind in your kitchen. Coffee grounds from the morning pot, vegetable peelings, or even a banana skin. Pair those with grass clippings after mowing, or the weeds you've just pulled and chopped. All of these are tender and quick to break down, and to microbes, they are nothing short of a feast. The easiest way to use them is to simply spread a layer about two inches thick over your garden bed and lightly water it in. You've just created what I like to call a microbial buffet. Within days, bacteria and fungi rush in to colonize this new supply of food, and your soil begins to show signs of renewed vitality. If you're working with raised beds or containers, you can mix equal parts compost and these soft organics into the top six inches of soil. Because these materials break down quickly, they boost microbial life far faster than woody branches or tough stems that take years to decompose. And here's a helpful habit for seniors. Keep a small kitchen pail or countertop container for your scraps. When it's full, walk it out to the garden, scatter the contents, and simply cover it with a little soil or mulch. No digging, no turning, just drop and cover. It's effortless, it's effective, and best of all, it turns everyday waste into new life for your soil. Ingredient three, cardboard. The surprising habitat builder. 
At first glance, plain brown cardboard seems useless in a garden. It looks dry, stiff, and lifeless. But the truth is, once it's dampened, cardboard becomes one of the best allies your soil microbes could ever ask for. Cardboard acts like a sponge. It holds onto moisture, creating a cool, damp refuge where microbes and fungi can thrive without fear of drying out. Tear it into strips and bury it two to four inches deep or lay whole sheets over bare patches of ground. What you've just created are fungal highways, underground corridors where soil life can travel and multiply. The carbon in cardboard breaks down slowly, providing a steady food source over weeks and months while its structure loosens compacted soil. If you've ever struggled with ground that feels hard as a brick, this method is a blessing. Cardboard interrupts that cycle of crusting and compaction, gently creating a softer, living layer underneath. You can make this even more powerful by combining cardboard with grass clippings or leaves. Imagine layering lasagna, a sheet of cardboard, a sprinkle of greens, then another thin layer of cardboard. This soil lasagna holds moisture, feeds microbes, and saves your back from heavy digging. For older gardeners, it's not just effective, it's practical. You don't have to break up tough clay with a shovel. You don't need machines or chemicals. Just lay, layer, and let nature do the work. Before long, you'll notice fungal threads weaving through the damp cardboard, and with them comes the return of life to your soil. Ingredient four, compost and worm castings, seeding new life. If sugars give microbes their morning coffee and soft organics serve as the feast, then compost and worm castings are the new neighbors moving in to liven up the block. These materials don't just feed microbes, they actually bring living populations straight into your soil, ready to settle down and multiply. Think of finished compost as a delivery truck packed with billions of tiny workers, all prepared to colonize fresh ground. Spread just a one-inch layer across your bed, and you've seeded your soil with a thriving community. Worm castings work in much the same way, except they carry an even richer mix of bacteria, enzymes, and trace minerals that plants love. A handful mixed into a planting hole can completely change how quickly roots establish and how strong your plants grow. And here's the best part for seniors, you don't need much. This isn't about hauling heavy bags or wheelbarrows. Even a small scoop of worm castings or a bucket of compost can make a difference that you'll notice in just a few weeks. Suddenly, that lifeless dirt begins to darken, roots spread more easily, and the first earthworms start to wiggle their way back. By introducing compost and castings, you're not only feeding the soil, you're restoring its diversity. Just like a healthy town thrives on a mix of voices and skills, your garden thrives when a wide range of microbes work together. And the more diverse the life in your soil, the more resilient your plants will be to pests, disease, and weather stress. Ingredient five, moisture and mulch. The steady heartbeat. Even the best recipe falls apart without the right rhythm. And for soil, that rhythm is moisture. Microbes can't thrive in extremes. If the soil dries out, they slip back into dormancy. If it stays waterlogged, they suffocate. What they crave is balance, conditions that are moist but breathable. This is where mulch becomes your most faithful ally. After you've added sugars, organics, and compost, cover everything with a layer two to three inches thick. Straw, shredded leaves, or wood chips all work beautifully. That layer acts like a blanket, keeping soil cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and most importantly, evenly moist. Think of mulch as the steady heartbeat that sustains soil life. Without it, microbes live on a roller coaster of drought and flood. With it, they enjoy a stable home where they can keep multiplying day after day. And here's a practical note. If you're working with sandy soil, you might need to water every two or three days at first because sand drains so quickly. If your soil is clay heavy, water less often but deeply, allowing moisture to reach the roots without drowning them. Either way, mulch helps stretch the time between waterings, saving you both effort and worry. For seniors, this is more than convenience. It's relief, less bending, less dragging hoses, fewer worries about missing a day. Collect bags of fall leaves and keep them stored for year-round mulch. They're free, lightweight, and packed with nutrients that return to the soil as they break down. With moisture under control, the microbes you've awakened with sugar and fed with organics now have the steady environment they need to truly thrive. 
It's the difference between fragile life that flickers out and a resilient ecosystem that keeps your garden alive through every season. Ingredient six, natural ferments, the secret elixirs. Now that we've given microbes food and shelter, let's talk about an ingredient that often gets overlooked, ferments. These are the secret elixirs that can supercharge microbial revival in ways many gardeners never expect. If you've ever made sauerkraut, kombucha, or even soaked rice in water and left it to sit for a day or two, you've already worked with the kind of living cultures that soil loves. When diluted and poured onto the soil, these natural ferments act like a probiotic drink for your garden. They're loaded with beneficial bacteria, enzymes, and organic acids that awaken sluggish microbes and encourage diversity in the soil community. Think of it as offering your soil the same kind of health boost we get when we eat yogurt or drink kefir. The best part is, you don't need large amounts. Just a splash of sauerkraut juice, a little leftover kombucha or that slightly sour smelling rice rinse water, all mixed with plenty of fresh water, is enough to bring new life into a bed. And because these ferments are often byproducts of our kitchens, they come at no extra cost. For seniors, this approach is as easy as it gets. No heavy lifting, no special equipment, just saving what you might otherwise pour down the drain and letting your garden enjoy the benefits. It's another lazy but brilliant step toward turning dead soil into living earth. Ingredient seven, biochar, the long-term booster. While ferments give your soil an immediate tonic, biochar provides something very different, long-lasting stability. Biochar is simply charcoal that's been activated, usually by soaking it in compost tea or manure water before it's added to the garden. On the surface, it might not look like much, but in the soil, it becomes a permanent home for microbes. Imagine a city built with thousands of tiny apartments. Each pore in the biochar is a safe little room where bacteria and fungi can live, protected from drying out or being washed away. Once placed in your soil, biochar can remain effective for decades, continuously supporting microbial life without needing to be replaced. A small bucket spread across a bed is enough to make a difference, and it doesn't require yearly repetition. For seniors, this means less work over time. You invest once, and the soil continues to benefit for years, even as seasons change and plants come and go. What's especially powerful about biochar is the way it works in harmony with everything else we've added. Sugars provide instant energy, organics provide food, cardboard creates habitat, Compost seeds new life, ferments add vitality, and biochar ensures that all this microbial activity has a permanent home. It's the long-term booster that ties the system together. So while you don't have to use biochar to revive your soil, adding even a little can set the stage for healthier, more resilient beds that practically take care of themselves. And for those of us who want to enjoy gardening with less strain and more reward, that's a gift worth considering. Ingredient 8. Layering. Copying nature's recipe. Each ingredient we've talked about, sugars, organics, cardboard, compost, ferments, and biochar, works on its own. But when you bring them together, something remarkable happens. Layering these ingredients creates conditions that closely mirror nature's own recipe for healthy soil. Think for a moment about a forest floor. Leaves fall in the autumn, tree roots leak sugars into the ground, Fungi stretch through fallen branches and animals leave behind waste that returns nutrients to the earth. Nothing is forced, nothing is rushed, and yet the soil in a forest is some of the richest, most fertile ground on the planet. When we layer in our gardens, we're borrowing from this natural wisdom. Sugars provide the quick spark, organics bring the feast, cardboard offers shelter, compost seeds new life, ferments add vitality, and biochar builds permanent housing. Finally, Mulch locks it all in, keeping the environment steady and moist. It's a simple system, but together it becomes more powerful than the sum of its parts. For seniors, this approach is comforting because it doesn't demand doing everything in a single day. You can add a little sugar water one week, scatter some kitchen scraps the next, and lay cardboard later on. Over time, these layers build up into a thriving ecosystem without overwhelming your energy. Gardening becomes less about hard labor and more about small, thoughtful steps that nature magnifies for you. Practical recipe for a 4x8 raised bed. 
Now let's bring all of this down to earth with a clear, easy to follow recipe you can try in a standard 4x8 raised bed. Start with the spark. Mix 2 tablespoons of molasses into a 2 gallon watering can, then drench the soil evenly. This wakes up any dormant microbes and tells them that food is on the way. Next comes the feast. Spread a 2 inch layer of soft organics like grass clippings, spent coffee grounds, or chopped leaves right across the surface. Think of this as setting the table for the microbial banquet. On top of that, add a 1 inch layer of finished compost or worm castings. This is your inoculant, introducing billions of living microbes that are ready to move in and get to work. Finally, cover everything with a 2 to 3 inch mulch blanket made of straw or shredded leaves. This step is essential. It locks in moisture, protects against temperature swings, and gives the microbes a stable environment to multiply. If you happen to have cardboard, slide a few dampened strips underneath before you begin. And if biochar is available, sprinkle a thin layer as you add compost. These extras aren't required, but they elevate the results and keep your soil healthier for the long term. Within two to three weeks, you'll likely notice subtle but powerful changes. The soil darkens, the texture softens, and the smell grows richer and more earthy. Sometimes you'll even see earthworms returning, drawn back to the feast you've set out for them. The beauty of this recipe is that it scales up or down. Whether you're tending a single container on a patio, a row in the backyard, or a large garden plot, the principles remain the same. Spark with sugars, feed with organics, seed with compost, protect with mulch. Nature does the rest. Reviving dead soil isn't about complicated formulas or expensive products. It's about remembering what microbes crave, seeding them with new life, and protecting the space they need to thrive. A little sugar for the spark, soft organics for the feast, cardboard for shelter, compost and worm castings for diversity, ferments for vitality, biochar for stability, and mulch for balance. Together, these humble ingredients awaken the hidden life beneath our feet and transform lifeless dirt into a living ecosystem once again. And maybe that's the deeper lesson for us as gardeners, especially in the later seasons of our lives. Just as soil can be renewed with care and patience, so too can we. We don't need to do it all at once. Small, steady steps, one layer here, one sprinkle there, add up to something powerful over time. Nature meets us halfway, magnifying our efforts and reminding us that healing is always possible. So the next time you walk into your garden and see soil that looks tired and worn, don't feel discouraged. Instead, feel encouraged, because revival is within reach. With just a few lazy but genius steps, you can restore balance, bring back vitality, and watch your plants flourish like never before. Thank you for spending this time with us here on Evergreen Seniors. If this message inspired you, share it with a fellow gardener who might need a little hope for their soil. And don't forget to subscribe, because every week we share simple, practical, and heartwarming tips to help you enjoy gardening at any age. Until next time, may your soil be alive, your plants be thriving, and your heart be light each time you step into your garden.